I know that some of you have probably heard of SMART goals. Some of you probably think that you can, you know, recite it in your sleep, and that's fine. But we're going to go over it again because it's very, very important. And a lot of people don't really create SMART goals, even though they know it in theory. I want you to actually do it. I want you to actually put it, put that theory into practice now. So SMART goals. Here it is in a nutshell. Uh, the word SMART is an acronym, so each letter indicates um, a certain element that your goal should have. I'm going to go through each element, and I'm going to provide you with a question that I want you to ask yourself as you're going through this, and it's going to help you make your SMART goal. It'll, by answering these questions, your SMART goal will be set. So the first one, S, stands for specific. Your goal has to include details. So think back to your resolution, get a better job. Okay, that's not a goal because there's nothing specific to it. To turn your resolution into a goal, you've got to include details. Don't just say you want a promotion. Think about the title you want. Think about the kind of raise that you want. The more detail you have, the better. So you're going to ask yourself this question. What exactly do I want to accomplish? That's the question you're asking yourself. The answer to that gives you the specificity that your SMART goal needs. Okay, M stands for measurable. So most measurement is going to be something numeric. Um, when I took my resolution, I wanted to start running again, and I turned it into a goal, um, I had to make it measurable. So my running goal is to be able to run 13.1 miles, which is the distance of a half marathon uh, by June, which is when my event is taking, taking place. Obviously, I have some smaller goals to kind of break that down incrementally to make it more manageable. Um, if you're looking to get a, a new, better job, for example, um, you know, think about the measurements that you can provide so that you know if the job really is better. Is it going to be more money? Is it going to be closer to home? Is it going to be a, more, uh, a better work environment? Try to come up with something that you can physically measure um, so that you know how, how close you are or how far you have to go as you're, you're going through this goal. So the question to ask yourself is, how will I know when I've reached this goal? Your measurement will tell you that in no uncertain terms. It's going to be really clear. I know that I've reached my running goal um, when I am able to run 13.1 miles. The A is for achievable. Uh, so I don't want you to create a goal that feels impossible. It can feel like a stretch. That's a great thing. It can and should feel challenging. It should feel a little bit difficult, but not impossible. You have to have the ability to make it happen. That's one of the reasons why I chose a half marathon. I don't really feel like a full marathon, which is 26 point something. I don't really feel like that is possible for me, being that right now I can't really run much at all. I'm, I'm uh, just not prepared for that. It wouldn't feel achievable. So ask yourself this question. Is achieving this goal realistic with effort and commitment? It should feel like I can do this. It's going to be hard, but I can do it. The R stands for relevant. So your goal should matter. This almost goes without saying. Um, you know, if it doesn't matter, it's not worth doing it. It has to have relevancy in your life. So go back to that question that I asked earlier about how does your career resolution impact the rest of your life? How will following through on it really impact your life? How will, you know, not keeping it, how would that impact your life? Get clear on the reasons why you're doing this. If you're not clear on it, take a moment and really think about it. And if it's not something that you get excited about and you feel like it really does matter, then you don't have the right goal. So it's time to rethink it if that happens. So ask yourself this question. What makes this goal significant to my life? All right, the T, the last letter in SMART, the T is um, that it should be timely. So this means that there should be some element of time involved. Some kind of deadline has to be set without it. We are humans, and um, we tend to procrastinate. We put things off. 
So hold yourself accountable by creating a deadline. Set a date by which you will complete this goal. Uh, make sure that it's realistic because again, we want this to feel achievable with effort and commitment. So don't say something like, I am going to figure out my professional purpose and I'm going to change my career by February. <laughs> Probably not going to happen. It takes longer to do something like that. So give yourself a reasonable amount of time to complete your goal. It can, again, feel a little bit like a stretch. Um, back to my half marathon uh, example, just because it's really easy to kind of pull, pull these things out of. Um, but my event is in June. I would not feel prepared if I had set a time limit um, to do this by March. But by June, I feel like it's very doable. And having that date in mind really does keep me on track. So do that for yourself. And just ask yourself this question, when will I achieve this goal? So if you go through and you really ask yourself those five questions, by the end you're going to have your SMART goal created there for you. It makes the whole process a lot easier to go through it with the questions because a lot of people understand SMART goals, they've heard this acronym before, but they don't really know how to actually implement it. Those questions, implement it, easy, boom, done.